One, two, three, four, let's go. It's Harvey. It's a fabulous show. Alaska. I Harvey, Alaska. It's Harvey. <laughs> Alaska. Pull up a chair and enjoy the show. You hear it from Sitka to Barrow. Gather around for Genie's show. It's the alley. Hello everyone and welcome to Harpy Alaska Native News and Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so much for joining us. Today's program is very, very important for all of us. We all know the dangers of smoking, the dangers of using tobacco, but did you know that for every eight people that die from tobacco use, one non-smoker dies? That's how dangerous secondhand smoke is. And the statistics skyrocket if you smoke inside the danger to everyone else. Travel with me now around the state of Alaska as we take a look at the dangers of secondhand smoke. And we also take a look at how a single person's action or a community decision can go a long way towards eliminating the dangers of secondhand smoke. Leadership comes in all forms. It is expressed in many different ways. Of course, when we think of leadership in traditional terms, we most often look to our elders, our parents, our community leaders, and those who direct our state and nation to use the wisdom and knowledge they have gained to keep us safe, to make our lives and our communities better places to live and work. Right now, we're gonna do organization. But you don't have to be the chief of a village to be a leader. There is the more subtle form of leadership that we don't always think about. Every time one of us makes a decision or takes an action either alone or with others that makes life better for ourselves, our neighbors and friends, that is a moment of leadership. Many times we make personal decisions that really have an impact on others in our family and in our community with far-reaching consequences. Today for Alaska Natives, among those many leadership decisions, few can be as important as what to do about tobacco use. Tobacco is the leading cause of preventable death for Alaska Natives. Those who choose to use tobacco can look forward to a life that is constantly threatened by cardiovascular disease, emphysema, heart attacks, and even strokes. But the tobacco-related health issues we battle also come from the air we breathe when we're in the same room with smokers and have to inhale secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke, also called environmental tobacco smoke, is the smoke given off by the burning end of a cigarette, pipe, or cigar, and the smoke that is exhaled from the lungs of a smoker. Smoke-filled rooms can have up to six times the air pollution of a busy highway. For every eight smokers who die from direct tobacco use, one non-smoker dies. Those deaths come from lung cancer, heart disease, sudden infant death syndrome, and other types of cancer. So it is a, a very serious problem. It causes about 53,000 deaths each year in the United States. That's more people than live in Juneau and almost two times the number of people who live in Bethel, Kenai, Barrow, Soldotna, and Dillingham combined. When you smoke in your household, you have children or you have a spouse, that person with you is also smoking because they're breathing the same air as you are. Nearly 6,000 children die each year as a result of exposure to secondhand smoke. Children who breathe secondhand smoke are more likely to suffer from pneumonia, bronchitis, and other lung infections, asthma, ear infections, and sudden infant death syndrome. Our elders and others with respiratory illnesses are especially at risk. Secondhand smoke can bring on a life-threatening attack. Whether you're eight or 80, 
The decision to live tobacco-free and secondhand smoke-free makes you a natural-born leader. To me, you know, a kid that doesn't smoke, to me, that's a leader. That's a kid that doesn't smoke. He's going to have some potential, and in, especially if he believes in himself. And to put all those aside and stand up and not and break that cigarette and not smoke that cigarette, you know, to me, that's you have to have more pride than being someone that holds a cigarette in his mouth. I mean, there's no point in doing it. I want to live a longer life. I mean, just paying for the cigarettes and stuff ain't worth it. I mean, you could buy a lot more valuable stuff besides the cigarettes. Most people who use tobacco start when they're very young. The growing bodies of young children become more quickly addicted to tobacco than do older people. As adults and leaders, we can keep all forms of tobacco, cigarettes, chew, ikmik, from our children. Uh, some of the things that, that communities have done to uh, be successful in their efforts is first to realize that, uh, that youth are becoming you know, addicted at earlier uh, ages, um, becoming more aware of, of, of where these tobacco products are coming from. Are they, are they uh, is it easy to get them at the store? And not just to put, the, put all the blame on the store, but to, to recognize that, um, you know, that tobacco use is, is, uh, is more prevalent that they're, than they're aware of. We can see outside of uh, different gatherings and, and, uh, and things like that where people gather up to smoke. And this could be at a health conference. This could be um, at a school basketball game people will go outside to smoke. And I, I think we don't realize how strong of a message that sends to you. Elders, you know, everybody has influence on kids, everybody. Even children, among children have influence. So I think, you know, people that do smoke around children have a big influence around them as well. I didn't think that as a smoker, I didn't think I had any influence on children. Oh, they'll smoke with or without me smoking a cigarette on oh, this it doesn't matter if I smoke a cigarette but it does matter um, I see a lot of young youth um, smoking cigarette and it really makes me angry inside that I smoked all those cigarettes in front of those all those children all those people for so long and it's hard for me to to preach and teach to the young ones that cigarettes are real bad for you because I myself pretty much demonstrated as of being a smoker for 16 years. I was raised with a non-smoking um, household. So um, when my two brothers became whaling captains, my, my mom asked if I would go buy in cigarettes. And I told her, no. I said, if, if the whaling crew members wish to smoke, they can buy their own cigarettes. We don't have to provide them cigarettes, too. Because uh, smoking, to me, is um, bad for your health. It, it creates a lot of respiratory problems for people even just around you who are not smokers. Edith Bordestraus, mayor of the city of Barrow, was the first recipient of the national award, the 100% Smoke Free Award of Excellence, presented by the national organization Americans for Non-Smokers Rights. Mayor Bordestraus helped Barrow residents put the health of their community ahead of private interests with a 100% smoke-free restaurant law. This is just one example of leadership at many levels, from local citizens who spoke up and were willing to ask the question, to the elected officials who helped enact laws to protect the health of local residents. Growing up in a smoke-free environment in your household has a lot to do with um, your decisions that you make. And my mother chose not to smoke, and. She said to me when I got caught smoking as a youngster, she said, you smoked before I ever did. And I think that has always stuck in the back of my mind. And my grandmother, who lived to be over 90, was also a non-smoker. So I had good role models. A leadership decision made in a family several generations ago, from grandmother to mother to a daughter who now leads her community. Barrow's children now stand a chance of a better future, 
one without the many diseases that come from secondhand smoke. And many of these children will make a leadership decision of their own, as their mayor did, not to use tobacco. Solving the problem of secondhand smoke isn't that complicated. In our own homes, in our cars, in workplaces and public places, we can eliminate the disease and death caused by secondhand smoke. Now, the big question is, how? Educate, then legislate. Right now, many Alaska Natives are taking their cigarettes outside. More and more homes in rural Alaskan communities are smoke-free. Education efforts have really made a difference in how we view secondhand smoke. But if we're serious about going smoke-free, we must eliminate smoking in public places as well. This community decision means long-term benefits with amazing results. The health effects are immediate uh, when a community does go smoke-free. We have a really neat study that was done in Helena, Montana. Uh, they had a smoke-free policy in their community for about six months, and in that six-month period, they saw a 60% drop in the number of heart attacks in that community. We are really proud of our communities that have been successful in adopting a clean indoor air policy. CHIVAC is one. We have had an organizer in CHIVAC and uh, she and uh, other folks there have done a wonderful job in getting the word out about clean indoor air and they were able to pass a uh, policy for their village council. The environmental program did a survey, a community-wide survey, of which clean indoor air pollution was ranked one of the top ten priorities. Cynthia Paniak of Chivac and Lorraine King of Ekwok were two guest speakers at this year's Alaska Tribal Conference on Environmental Management. Cynthia, Lorraine, and others in their communities took the steps necessary in assisting Chivac and Ekwok to become smoke-free in community places. Juno has a policy, Homer has a policy now, um, and uh, a, a few years ago Bethel was the first community that uh, went smoke-free, um, followed then by Barrow. the people as Alaska Natives are making the decision to leave behind an addiction that has caused nothing but harm and heartache, that has taken away so much of our strength. With the knowledge we now have, we can teach our young people the lessons we have learned so that they might live a longer and healthier life. With the knowledge of the dangers of secondhand smoke, many communities are taking steps to fight this deadly killer. Dimitri Trepanov of Accutan, located in the Eastern Aleutians, is a smoker of many years now. Although Dimitri has been unsuccessful at his attempts to quit smoking, he has become educated on the effects of secondhand smoke, and like many in his community, is taking his habit outdoors for the sake of his children. A lot of people here in Accutan, they, I mean, they'd rather smoke outside than in their homes. I mean, after after hearing about it, I mean, what smoke could do to you or, or even your whole family, you know. And, and, I mean, it's been happening and, and uh, all over, so. Throughout the Eastern Aleutians, there is an awareness taking place within the rural communities. It's an awareness that is changing lives for the better. Through the leadership of the Eastern Aleutians Tribes Program, Many rural residents are kicking the habit, and most, if not all, residents who are still smoking cigarettes are smoking outside. It's a program that truly reflects community involvement. We represent six communities, and we contract out to others. And you know, they range in size from from um, uh, well under a hundred to up to a thousand. And so, it's it's a variety of different programming in each of the communities. Uh, and the village-based counselors that way get to tailor it so that it fits the communities. And then we bring in other people to support, like Dr. Gary, who makes quarterly visits to each of the sites. So it's a disease. How does it manifest in the body? What is it all about? 
Dr. Gary Ferguson was born and raised in Sand Point, one of the six communities in the Eastern Aleutians. A naturopathic doctor, Gary spends his time traveling the Aleutians, visiting communities and the people who live there, exploring and researching the vast vegetation and tundra life that blankets the Aleutians. The Russian name is Petrushkir, beach lovage. And it's a great source of vitamin C. It's what saved a lot of the early pioneers to the region from getting scurvy. Of course, the natives knew exactly what to eat. But uh, it's best in the spring. It's a little woody right now. The weapons to battle addiction can be found in many ways, like from our surroundings or through people we know. But ultimately, the greatest weapons lie within us. Fall back on the values, uh, the cultural values. There's a lot of strength within that. And uh, when we utilize our cultural values, uh, we begin to draw on the things that make us strong, the things that make us healthy, um, good living. And uh, tobacco use takes away from, from, our, from our health. It takes away from all those things that we're trying to become. It really hides who we are as individuals. Now that we understand the dangers of secondhand smoke, we can all take action. Across the country, more than 1,600 communities, state governments such as New York, California, and Connecticut, and even some countries, are protecting people by passing laws to keep secondhand smoke out of public places and workplaces. Alaskan cities and villages have passed the same types of laws. Oh, don't worry. Tobacco users are still free to smoke, but not where it will damage the health of others. In Alaska today, each community must pass its own law. It should be a law that protects all workers, not just some, and it has to be fair. For many years now, the Alaska Native Health Board has been helping Alaskans create smoke-free public places and workplaces. If there's someone in the community that has approached us and wants to have assistance, there's a number of things that we can do. We can offer them support. We have materials that can be provided. We have, uh, through the Alaska Native Tobacco Support Program, we have a wonderful clean indoor air agreement handbook for Alaska Native communities. And this, this handbook was um, developed a couple of years ago, and it has actually a policy that is a draft that communities can uh, uh, revise for their own purposes. So this is an excellent source of information about the state laws regarding clean indoor air. And we, we actually work along with those folks by giving them ideas, answering their questions, uh, helping them uh, uh, provide things like if they have a radio station, they may want to have announcements on their radio station. Or if they have a community newsletter, then we help them put information in their newsletter. And uh, we can also assist by uh, uh, helping them with community processes. If they want to have a decision process where the whole community is involved in talking about environmental priorities, then we can do that. The first job is to educate everyone. The education is critical uh, that people understand that secondhand smoke is not just irritating, it is deadly. Next, work to pass ordinances at the local level that ban smoking in indoor workplaces. And don't forget to include public gathering places. All schools in Alaska are tobacco free, but sometimes we have to deal with the area outside the school because when there's events like basketball tournaments, people tend to gather around the entrances of the schools and the community may wish to have a policy that uh, prohibit smoking within, say, 20 feet or 50 feet. For business owners, going smoke-free can mean good things for their customers and employees as well. On an individual level, 
when businesses go smoke free, they see employees having fewer sick days uh, because they're not being exposed to the secondhand smoke. The employees who do smoke are smoking less. Productivity is up because employees, employees are healthier and happier. They're taking fewer smoke breaks. Um, so maintenance costs are reduced. Uh, there's just a lot of economic impact to the indo individual business as well as on the community level as a whole. It's a win-win situation for everyone when a community goes smoke-free. For those who don't smoke, they can be assured of a clean air workplace. And for those that do, they can rest well knowing that they are not causing harm to others. The overall atmosphere of a village can change almost overnight. Continue with educating your community. Let people know that you care about your village. You care about your people. Help make our future smoke-free and tobacco-free. If you'd like more information on making your community a smoke-free community, you can call the Alaska Native Health Board at 907-562-6006. And you know, it's never too soon. It's never too late to quit. For those of you thinking about quitting tobacco, Leonard Lampy of Nuiksik has some suggestions and some words of encouragement. It's real important to get away from smokers, get a pack of gum, a couple packs of gum, some, some hard candy, and be active and do things that you normally don't do. I, I, did, I went on a treadmill that week. I lifted weights. Um, I went boating a lot, um, went fishing a lot. I just got to be more active, but I feel a lot better health-wise. Tobacco quit line, this is Andrea, can I help you? Success is only a phone call right, away. So like For those who use tobacco and want to quit, there are a variety of methods available. The Alaska Tobacco Quit Line is a free statewide service with a toll-free number. The quit line is staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week by registered nurse counselors who are trained in the field of tobacco cessation and can help you explore the options available to you. Remember, it's a free call and help is available around the clock. That's right, free. In fact, all of your calls are free, the help is free, and no one at the quit line will scold you if you slip. They are there to help, whether you need materials to read or a friend to talk to. Every time you feel like using tobacco, just give the quit line a call. Thank you everyone for joining us for Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Information. Thank you, my good friends across Canada and the lower 48 from Alaska from one end to another. God bless every single one of you. Join me again next week for more Native news, Native information, Native fun, Native entertainment. We'll see you then. I'm a